neither carbon has the same two groups on it. And therefore, there's going to be a system, there's going to be a geometric isomerism possibility here. So that's why, that's why I said we're not done. We have to go back and name whether it's cis or trans. In this particular case, I have H here and H here. So they're on opposite sides of the double bond. That's my frame of reference. So these are trans. Right? This is trans, blah, 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 trans, blah, blah, blah. Something interesting happens, though, or can happen. And uh, the, the, the way you can look at it is the following. So what if, for example, I had this couple? Well, in a case like that, I'm going to call this company. So this is this is in. It's butene. It's two butene, and it's trans. Right. So in for carbons but the bond between carbon two and three, either we number it, and it's trans because I've got my my methyl groups are on opposite sides, my H's are on opposite sides. So that's trans to butene. What if instead of having two H's, as I have with this compound, what if instead we had an H and a D? Now, although H and D are chemically uh, equivalent in the sense that they give the same chemistry, H is not D, right? D has D has one more a neutron in the nucleus than this H. So these two compounds are not the same. But I can still call this trans because my methods are on opposite sides of the double bond. Okay? Um, and, and what would I call this? I would call this trans uh, two deuterio two beauty. Right? So it's a trans compound. I've got the double bond at the carbon number two, and I've got my deuterium at the carbon number two. So it's trans to deuterium, right? Uh, to butene. But now what if I kept the D and the H, but instead of having um, the these being two methyls, what if I made this, for example, an ethyl? Well, the problem here is I can't call this cis or trans anymore because the, the labels cis and trans are used when a, when a given group is given to describe the, the, the relative positions of the same group across relative to the double bond. So if I had two H's on opposite sides of the double bond, trans, two methyls on opposite sides, trans, two methyls on the same side, right? If I have two methyls on the same side, right, that would be cis. But the methyls would have to be the same. But here, I, I don't have H's on both carbons, both vanillic carbons. I don't have methyls on vanillic carbons. So I don't have like groups, either on the same side or on opposite sides. So I can't use the labels cis or trans of this compound. Right? If I have two methyls, sure. Two H's or two D's, sure. But there's a method on this carbon, but not on that one. And method is not ethyl. There's an H on that carbon, but not on that one. H is not D. But I know full well that compound is different from this compound.
right? So I know those two compounds are very different. Now they've got the same connectivity. Methyl, vanillic, attached to H. Double bond to carbon, attached to D, attached to F. So their connectivities are the same. So they're not constitutional isomers, but their, 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 their spatial arrangements of the H's and the D's and the methyl and the ethyls are different. I know, for example, this compound is a heck of a lot more unstable, more highly energetic than this one. Because it turns out the, the methyl group is a certain size, the ethyl group is a certain size. These two groups are bumping into each other, rubbing against each other, destabilizing. Whereas in this case, they're further apart and there's less, less hindrance. So these two compounds are very different from each other. And so I need to indicate which is which. But here's a case where the labels cis and trans don't apply. So what do we do? Right? How do we distinguish this compound from that compound? And the answer is we're going to use what's called the Kahn. Ingold Prelog system. It's called the Kahn Ingold Prelog system. And here's what we do. We're going to say, let's look at the atoms directly attached each vanilla carbon and assign them priorities based upon their atomic numbers. Okay. This carbon, this vanilla carbon, has H, atomic number one. Also attached to it is carbon, directly attached to this carbon, atomic number uh, six. Carbon has a higher atomic number than H. I'm going to call this priority one. I will give this priority two. But we're here. Attached to this unit carbon is a D, atomic number one. It's an isotope of hydrogen. And attached to this same unit carbon is another carbon, atomic number six. Right? Say this. Uh, so this is where carbon is attached to D, atomic number one, attached to carbon, atomic number six. So this is going to have a higher priority than this, because six beats one. So my groups of like priority, one and one, two and two, are on opposite sides of the double bond. I'm going to call this compound the E compound, or trans, but E. E comes from the German word "ungegen," which means uh, opposite. In this compound, my group is my vanilla carbon. It's got carbon, atomic number six, H, atomic number one. This is first priority. This is second priority. Atomic number six, atomic number one. This is first priority. Second priority. Here, my groups of like priority, one and one, two and two, are on the same side, the double bond. This is called the Z isomer, from the German word zusammen, which means together. Now, E and Z would work. Anytime there is geometric isomerism, cis and trans will not. So there are cases where cis and trans will not apply when you don't have the same groups, right? On, on carbons one and two or on the double bond. But E and C will always apply if there is geometric isomerism. Now, um, the, there's another little subtlety here that needs to be addressed with both sheets. Well, whatever. There's another subtlety which needs to be addressed here, which is that E and Z, or, hmm, let, let's, let's, if I have this compound, um,
So if I wanted to designate configuration, systrans and so on, E and C, and those refer to what are called configurations, which are the, the configuration is the permanent three-dimensional three-dimensional arrangement of the groups, in this case about the double bond. In this case, I've got my, my metal groups on opposite sides. So I'm going to call this the trans species. That's true here too. This is also trans species. But if I looked at priorities, on this carbon, this is priority one, and that's priority two. On this carbon, this is priority one, and that's priority two. So this is trans, but it's also E. Because my groups of like priority one and one are on opposite sides. So this is trans, because my methyls are on opposite sides. But in terms of priority, this is one, and that's two. This is one, and that's two. So in terms of, in terms of uh, EZ, here are my groups of like priority are on the same side. So this is trans and Z. In other words, the, the point I'm making here is that trans does not mean E. Trans and E are not interchangeable terms. Neither for that matter is cis and Z. They're not interchangeable. And, and that makes, and no, sometimes they're the same, right? Sometimes, sometimes I can use either, um, but they, they're not interchangeable. And the reason that is the case is because cis and trans speak directly to the identity of the atoms, of the groups attached to the vanillic carbon. E and Z don't. They don't care who you are, they just care what's your priority. So sometimes a trans compound is an E compound, but sometimes a trans compound is Z. Sometimes cis is Z, sometimes cis is E. Right? They're two different naming species. So they don't they won't always match. There's another point I forgot to, to mention here. If if I had something like this, right? How do I assign priorities? So on this carbon, this vanilla carbon, I'm directly attached to a carbon. Well, that's true here too. That's attached to a carbon. So the first point of attachment is the same. I'm going to go one atom out. This is attached to two H's and an H. This is attached to two H's and a carbon. So the two H's are a wash. Carbon beats H. So this is priority one, that's priority two. Right? So if the first, if I can't make a decision at the first point of attachment, so carbon for carbon, O for O, I'm going to go to the next atom. Right? And if that doesn't let me decide, I go to the next atom, and so on and so on and so on. So from that perspective, um, See that the tert group would beat the isopropyl group. And that's going to beat the ethyl group. And so on and so on and so on. Um, and OCH3 would beat OH. Okay? What about here though? These two have the same atomic numbers, and there's only one atom. So what happens when I'm dealing with isotopes? And the answer is, the isotope of heavier mass wins. So this is priority one, because this has an atomic mass of two. This is priority two, has an atomic mass of one. So this is, this is two, one, and uh, this is one, two. So this compound, right, would be the Z 
the isomer. This compound would be the E isomer. And if you look at them, the labels cis and trans don't apply to those compounds. Because the H of this carbon is not matched by an H here. Neither is the D, or the methyl, or the ethyl. So there are times when cis and trans will not work, even though there's geometric isomerism. And so in those cases, E and Z will always work. So we do E and Z, uh, use a, a Kahn angle prelog system based upon the atomic numbers of the first attached atom, and the second, third, fourth, and so on, to the side. Um, and then when the atoms are isotopes, you look at atomic mass. Anyway, to get back to this question, and I, I erased the name already, but obviously here, I've got an, an H, I've got an H. On the opposite side, so this to be the trans, whatever stuff we had. Or in terms of priority, um, on this carbon, carbon beats H, priority one. On this carbon, pri uh, uh, carbon beats H, priority one. So the ones are on opposite sides. And the code is the E carbon. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's stop there, and we pick up from here on the next next lecture. Okay. <sighs>